What's up you guys? Welcome back to Last Humans Linux. And today we're going to look at a few monitoring type tools and we're going to look at um, a disk monitoring tool also. So let's just start with the most common one that, that everybody knows. So that's just top, right? Everybody knows that command. Um, it's, it's good for what it is. You have, sh you have shortcut keys. You can sort in various columns. One of the first things I learned about top when I was first using it is that your CPU percentage here, you can have it say 100% at the top. The top couple can be 100%. That doesn't necessarily mean your machine is maxed out on CPU. That's because the top command does not have as much detail as some other commands. So when this says 100%, it's generally talking about one core. And as you probably know, um, this is a VM and also any other normal physical machine you can have multiple cores. So you say, well, how do you know then how much of your CPU is really being used? So let's just do a Q to leave top and a Control L to clear the screen. And we're going to look at HTOP. And it is not installed. So I'm going to go ahead and do something like this. I'm going to just install it real quick. Let me see if this works for us. All right, here comes HTOP. 10 seconds, that's all it takes. Control L again to clear the screen. Same as, a, same as typing the command clear, just a control L on the Ubuntu at least. I'm not sh sure about other flavors, but it, this does work on Ubuntu. So now we should be able to launch the HTOP successfully, which is just kind of an enhanced version of top. And the best thing about HTOP that you're looking at right here is that at the very top, you see each of your CPU cores individually. You can see I have one, two, three, three different cores. So what your top would be showing you is say like number one is 100, your top will say your CPU is 100%. But that's not the whole story. That's why you do want to install HTOP and have that handy when you're diagnosing any CPU issues. And you can then look at all three CPUs at the very top here, one, two, three, at the same time. Now, if all three are maxed out, yes, you have some CPU issues. But you can see it's working nicely here. Two of the cores are barely even used. So that's one of the first things I learned about CPU monitoring. Um, the HTOP will really give you a full view. These days, you can have CPUs with 16, 32 cores, and it would show all of those at the top of the screen. If you really have a heavily util utilized machine, you can really get a good grasp on that. You can see the memory here is only half used. This was a VM. It was just my random parts choices, three cores, even though it probably only needs two. And just threw in about five gig of RAM. I just, I don't want to go in slow. I'm sure it could work on a lot less. So that's the HTOP for you. Now, one other thing. Let's confirm the CPU cores in this VM. We can look at the CPU information here with this command. So a sudo, because it is a, a stronger command, so to speak. This isn't, you know, super official channel. I make mistakes. I do spelling errors, etc. We're just kind of having fun here, just learning a little bit. So in the proc, I call it the process directory. That may be incorrect. That's what I call it. It's, it's kind of live info. So to cat, I want to view the contents of the CPU information table just kind of random words I'm throwing out, just to look at it. And I'm going to pipe it to a less to stop it because or else it'll be like five pages. You'll miss it. So let's just look at the first section here, CPU info. So this is, going to ha this is how we're going to find out how many cores this has. Now, this doesn't really tell us straight up, but I'm going to give you a little better command after this. But what, what you can see here is you can see the CPU type that this Oracle VM VirtualBox application is installed on. 
And of course, this VM is using some of those cores available on that CPU. This is basically my gaming PC, although it is three to four years old. Um, it works fine for now, but as you can tell probably by looking at that CPU, it's pretty old. It's a pretty old CPU. So let's see how to get out just the information we want about cores out of this file. So what we do is we cat the proc file again, but we're going to grep a certain item. So let's see here. On the list of all these settings, what could tell us the core or give us an idea, a way to count? Well, for me, the processor line will. So let's quit that, take away the less, grep. I'll throw a dash I to ignore case, just so I don't have to remember if it had a capital P. I almost always use a dash I in case I have a misspelling somewhere. Now we're, gonna, we're just going to find any line which has the word processor in it. And there's your answer right there, exactly what we're talking about. This VM has three cores. So if you don't want all the other mumbo jumbo, you can grep by any line you want by choosing your keyword, of course. You can cho choose model, anything you want. But that is exactly how I confirm that I do have three cores. The first one does start with a zero. That doesn't mean none. So you have one, two, and three cores in the box. So that's a little bit about top, HTOP, and CPU info. Just to show you real quick, even though it's not really related to this. You also have a mem info, same exact thing. And I'll just do like the top 10 lines of mem info. So head, top 10 lines, tail is the last 10 lines. And you can even go the top one line. Most people just want to know how much memory is in the machine. Remember we said five gigabyte earlier? Here we can see five gigabyte mem total. Now the calculations are a little bit different, you know, 1,000, 1024 calculates a bit. So it does say 494, but that's five gigabytes of RAM. So if you just wanted to know the RAM count, you could just go head one. And that's how you'd find the memory info in any box you're on. Um, preferably Ubuntu, my favorite, but it should work in any Linux box also. All right, let me do a control L after I click on the VM. Control L. All right, the last thing we're going to look at is some disk tools. So if you might recall from a previous lesson, the simple way to just look at your disks in the machine is an LS block, LSBLK. And if you had RAID disks like I've had in the previous lesson, you'd have B, C, D, E, etc. This just has A. It just has one disk, the operating system disk. I wanted to clarify that at first before we look at these disk tools because you want to keep the SDA in mind. That's our disk address. So let's say I wanted to get some information on SDA. Let's go ahead and try it and I'll show you what happens. I want all info dash A. Smart CTL is the command. And the disk address. You always need a dev in front, device, etc. Now look what happens. I don't have that product in that um package installed. So I'm going to hop on here. That package is called Smartmon Tools. Okay. I, I believe it is. <laughs> We're about to find out. Um, let's see if this works. Yes. Yes. All right. So we're throwing smart mon tools on here, which is the smart CTL command. Don't be confused. Don't get those mixed up. So first, let me give you a quick sample. Again, I'll throw sudo on there just because it is kind of an administration task. Now, I'm not positive it does require sudo. You can play with that a bit. I'm just doing the most likely chance here for us to work. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pipe it to less. Remember, you can pipe it, which is that up and down line, just in case you're unfamiliar. And it's kind of like connecting two commands together. So you can pipe it to more, which will only get let you go downwards in the page. You cannot go back up. Less is the preferred command these days because it lets you go up or down the file as needed. So let's use less. And right here, we get an error because this isn't a true real disk. This is the only information it can get because it's a virtual disk. It's not a physical disk. But that is the command that you use. 
Now I can tell you a couple other commands, although we, we can't use them. We probably, I should say, cannot use them in this particular disk because it is a virtual disk. Let me tell you about this. So dash T is a test, and it's basically checking the disk. And you can do a short or a long option with your dash T to say what kind of test you want. Now, I don't think this is going to work, I'll tell you right now, with the VM virtual disk, but I just want to try it myself. I honestly do not know. Okay, that is correct. Um, the virtual disks are not going to have all the smart tools and technology to understand all this, but at least this is showing you the commands you can use on any physical disk. So you just do a long test, just like that, and then I wish I could show you the actual full output of Smart CTL, but I just can't with a particular machine I have. I don't have a physical machine for you. But the Smart CTL, go ahead and try it on your machine if you have some physical disks in there, and you will love what you see. You have disk serial numbers, model numbers. The biggest thing is you have this big table with all the disk specifications. How many hours it's run, how many bytes it's written, read, how many errors, so many different options you can look at. And it'll also tell you when it's approaching a failure level in that table. So make sure you do look at that a little bit deeper. I wish I could have showed you here, but again, I'm working with a VM, which is how I do my Linux um, on top of my uh, Windows gaming PC. So that just gives you an idea of the commands, and it'll help you gather disk model and serial numbers if you don't want to take your disks out of the machine to get that, etc. So that's about all I have for you today. This is Last Humans Linux signing off. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. All right, guys, let's get into one last thing here. Now I want to show you my favorite monitoring tool, which is called Enmon. And it'll let you do all this stuff at once as far as monitoring your system resources. So I, again, already know what's going to happen, but let's try and launch it. You don't really need a sudo in front of that. I don't have that command. That package, rather, is a better way to put that. So I'm going to go apt install and mon. And we're just going to throw that tool on there. It's already done. Control L to clear the screen. And mon, we do not need sudo on this. All right. So as I'm going to show you here, I just deal with the CMDNN keys most of the time. CPU, memory, disks, and network. I'll let you look at that a bit. There's other ones there that I don't use too much. But this is so much easier for me than trying to use a top. Um, I love the way this works. So I'm just going to hit the C key. Let's get our CPU up. I'm going to hit the M key. Let's get our memory up. I'm going to hit our disk key. I'll press D. Get our disk I.O. up. And let's finish up with network N. See how cool that is? You get everything on the same screen. And what's great in the disk area down here, as you're writing, as there's a lot of disk activity, you'll see RW blocks just going across the screen. So you can tell, and it'll go up to 100% max disk, and it'll tell you if it's a reading or writing activity by the R or the W in the box. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of activity right now. It's not really working for me. But you can also see here, this VM just has one network interface. You can monitor all that, the network, the CPU. As we looked at with HTOP, this is the same deal, right? Super sweet. Individual CPUs, they're not even used. And you can see user right there flashing every once in a while, the letter U, showing that there's almost nothing going on on the on the CPUs right now. And then the RAM, the memory, you do get some nice specs, makes it nice and easy to look at. And you can mix and match any of these. I'll press N to take away network. I'll press M to take away memory. You can mix and match any of these ones you want. So this is actually my favorite monitoring tool. I'll just go Q to get out of it, similar to top, and we're back there. So Enmon is the last thing I wanted to show you. Make sure you install that if you have an Ubuntu machine and you want to just have really quick process management and evaluations. 
All right, guys, that's really it. I'll see you next time.